Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan Emmis Pitts. This is Ukraine War news update, second part thereof for the 7th of uh, April 2024. This is the military aid and equipment segment. I have a geopolitical segment I'm going to keep separate because there's a, quite a bit of discussion I want to do. It might be sort of divisive discussion, I hope it isn't. It's a really, I think, fascinating look at a a certain part there's some um, empirical evidence coming out to show there's a certain affinity with uh, people in the political spectrum in the US with Putin and there's actually um, as I say empirical evidence and research to, to show that there is you know some people over the pond generally quite like what Putin is all about. Um, so that, that's an interesting data point that I want to dip into and do quite a bit of discussion on. So, so I will separate the two videos out. Let's just run through where we are with military aid. So the agreement on the provision on a hundred, uh, of 100 billion euros aid by the alliance. So NATO has talked about this new, uh, I think, five-year plan for 100 billion euros to go to Ukraine. Uh, yeah, the five-year plan. That's going to be agreed uh, on in July or by July, according to Jens Stoltenberg, the Secretary General. That'd be phenomenal. They need as much help as they can get. I My sense of what's going on in Ukraine at the moment is like one step forward and one step back, and we're, we're left in the middle. So at the moment, Ukraine are doing really well in, or Russia are actually doing really well of committing suicide with half their troops, like throwing troops and equipment at the Ukrainians, like in some kind of mass Harry Kiri, and then having all, all sorts of equipment destroyed and personnel uh, attrited. And Ukraine are doing a really good job of attriting Russian resources. But on the, uh, and they are losing some territory, but I don't think it's particularly significant, as in, in, in the whole s scheme of things. But Russia are having some victories on the political scene, although there are also uh, some challenges for Russia on the political scene. So I think they are winning in the US to some degree, by point of fact, there's six months of impasse. They are winning in certain areas of Europe, Slovakia, Hungary, uh, and the rise of the far right and fermenting discord and disunity in the European Union. But at the same time, there are those in the European Union and in UK who are standing up and saying, right, we need Europe to stand on its own two feet, uh, separate from America, because we can see that if there are issues with the political, uh, a change of political winds over there, then we need to stand up. So there is like, all good, all bad, all good, all bad. And I just get this feeling of up and down all the time. But I think it, in the end, it, it's, it's levelling itself out and we're still just in this horrible situation of a war that doesn't seem to be changing all that much. But I do feel good about uh, Ukraine militarily going forward. But the big challenge, and we're going to talk about this in a second, is that China is apparently helping Ukraine, uh, Russia more and more behind the scenes. And so aid with satellite I imagery, which I think is m far more significant than, than many might think. I mean, that, that is huge. One of the advantage, you, big advantages Ukraine has had over the course of this war is the access to Western intelligence through satellites. And so that uh, has allowed Ukraine to be much more effective with a much smaller army. Uh, and they are the hits that they've they've secured against targets, Russian targets, have been really effective um, and efficient. Russia have, have been just throwing lead all over the place and trying to destroy stuff by just throwing missiles and rockets and shahids into Ukraine. But over the course of the war, and much more recently indeed, we have seen Russia adapt and become much more effective in their strikes. So we can look at Kharkiv, we can look at the energy infrastructure. This year, two years after they were trying to ham the energy infrastructure and didn't do a very good job, this year they've done it far less um, in terms of the number of missiles and shahids thrown at the energy infrastructure, but have been far more effective. So what explains that? And I, I'm absolutely positive it's the Chinese influence there. So up and down, up and down. Uh, it's really frustrating because whenever Ukraine seem to get an advantage, they seem to be hamstrung by the inability to... And then it's not Ukraine's fault in this case, the inability to make good on those advantages because Russia manages to get around uh, their issues in some way. Um, Zelensky said that he needs 25 Patriot anti-aircraft missile systems and has informed all the Western partners about this. Everyone knows about this. They need Patriots. Of course they do. They need as many of them as they can get, both for defensive capabilities and offensive capabilities to try and take out those airframes as they drop bombs and missiles on 
Ukraine. Now, talking about airframes, F-16s for Ukraine, the Netherlands have revealed timing and the quantity of plane deliveries to Ukraine, uh, to the Ukrainian armed forces. Quote, in total, we are going to hand over 24 F-16 fighters. They will be handed over to Ukraine as soon as everything is ready. The moment depends on the training of Ukrainian pilots and technicians as well as infrastructure, according to the Dutch Defence Minister Kajia Ollengren. Uh, really good news of course they need as many of those as they can get and in, indeed there's a little bit of a of a worry Zelensky on the fighter jets from allies has said in this year they will receive 10 percent of the required volume so the Netherlands really stepping up there but it, quote if you fight in the sky you have to fight and win it's not like we have f-16s this is not enough we what is 10 percent of of our modern air fleet, which is enough to defeat the number of Russian aircraft operating in Ukraine on its own. We know how many we need, 10% this year, but if we have both airplanes and air defense systems, we can do it. I, I, it's a, the English is a bit battered there, so I, 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 it's almost as if, yeah, he's fine with the 10%, or rather than complaining about the 10%, but either way, the idea is that they are going to have a very limited amount of F-16s, I think, operating, possibly because of all the issues like the number of airframes i don't even know the capability of the airframes whether they'll be up to up to scratch straight away uh, who knows um uh, as in you know what's the range of their radars what weaponry will they have on board all that kind of stuff but then it's uh, the technicians uh yeah pilot training technicians and ground crew and everything and logistics so that will gather momentum i'm sure as it goes forward but the big challenge is what is russia going to do to meet the the new uh, their own challenge of the F-16s getting into Ukraine. How are they, are they going to absolutely hammer the Ukrainian air, air bases? And I'm absolutely positive they will. I think this is going to be a huge issue for the Ukrainians and how to stop the Russians um, really, you know, pouring a downer on the on the party uh, when it comes to F-16s. Um, right, Zelensky has talked about Macron's proposal. Well, Proposal not to take military um, aid in, in the form of troops, French troops, off the table. Uh, I supported Macron's proposal for the French military to come here to train our people. So Zelensky obviously is in support of that, right? It, and indeed, he's in support of any help. So in a conversation with US senators, so a group of US senators has gone, a bipartisan group has gone to uh, Kiev to meet with Zelensky. And meeting them, he said that he's agreed to any money from the states, whether it's credit or not. So whether it comes in the form of loans or grants or whatever, he's like, we are not in a position to say, well, we'd actually prefer that to be X rather than Y. He says, as he says here, there is no choice here. It's a matter of survival. They need whatever they can get, the Ukrainians. So they'll take whatever form of assistance. They're fighting for their survival. Canada is to increase aid to Ukraine amid US delays. So Canada's support has become an important contribution uh, to strengthening NATO at a time when the USA has failed to step up its assistance. According to the finance minister, Christia Freeland, uh, in Canada. So good news there. Let's hope that there's there's money or equipment where the mouth is, uh, tangible aid to follow rhetoric. Uh, Daniela here from Tochnia said, add formation flying and carpet bombing. Is, uh, formation flying and carpet bombing is back. Well, what's this? Well, the Ukrainian backfire K1 bomber, which we saw dropping some bomblets on a Pantsir um, air defense system the other day. As you can see there, bomblets being dropped there, uh, is entering serial production. What this is actually really significant. See, Daniela has, has obviously got a great point there. That if you can create, I don't know, 50 of these to fly over Russian lines and dropping bomblets like that, then you could have a form of much smaller, each individual explosive would be much smaller, but you can have an effect uh, on on of sort of carpet bombing with drones. Um, GPS guided, a ballistic computer for accurate bombing, and it's recovered by parachute. Uh, so these are reusable drones that can be sent on bombing raids across uh, across the Russian lines. Now, of course, you know if you can see them up there, I don't know how far up these fly and how easy they will be to spot, whether you can take them out with small arms fire or whether you need something more significant or whether they can operate at night. So you can, uh, you can imagine them being really effective working at night where it's going to be a lot harder to detect and acqu acquire these targets and take them down. But good evolution of these capabilities. Ukraine is also developing its own weapons against the Russian carb aerial bombs, says Zelensky. So I presume, well, 
Mm. The implication there appears to be a weapon against the bomb itself, right? So you drop the bomb and you hit that bomb with some kind of air defense system. Of course, that is a sticking plaster because, you know, rather than curing, uh, rather than um, treating the disease, you want to cure it, you want to prevent the disease, which is really striking the airframe, striking those air bases. That's where Ukraine are going to want to concentrate their resources, but also working to maybe be able to take out the bombs as they are released as well. I don't know any details about that and also how long away that would be. Earlier this week, more huge cargo jets touched down in Russia from Iran, says Tim White. We suspected Tehran had supplied more drones and the actions at the end of this week confirmed suspicions. One killer drone has smashed into a residential building in Kharkiv. Uh, sorry, that's adding something randomly different to that tweet. Sorry, the important point there is Iran are helping Ukraine and there are more jets touching down with help from Ukraine. Uh, help from, oh goodness me, words, are helping Russia uh, Iran is 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 definitely uh, really coming through with their aid there. U.S. Army is concerned that Ukraine has become a testing ground for North Korea's missiles. So we move from one element of the axis of evil, Iran, if you like, to uh, North Korea here. Uh, the commander of the Pacific Army, General Charles Flynn, has noted that this is the first time that the uh, North Koreans have uh, can test their missiles in real combat operations. According to the to the general, this allows North Korea to obtain valuable information on technical issues, procedures, and the missiles themselves. The U.S. will be watching closely to see how this develops. This is a frustration. One step forward, one step back. Uh, Russia are getting this assistance where if they were getting no help from Iran and no help from Russia. Uh, sorry, from North Korea, no help from China, things would be vastly different. But these three nations are keeping the Russia's war efforts uh, alive, really. Uh, China, and moving on to the, the subject to China, they have provided Russia with satellite images for military purposes, as well as microelectronics and machines for tank production, says Bloomberg, as I reported earlier. China's support also includes optical instruments, rocket fuel, and increased space cooperation. This is a massive challenge. Something needs to be done about this. And I know the Americans are trying to put pressure on uh, behind closed doors or in the, in the back channels there. That really needs to happen because this can could under undercut, um, undermine really all of the great efforts of allies to support Ukraine with equipment and with intelligence. Um, it's about keeping things asymmetrical. So Ukraine have this huge advantage with intelligence, but if Russia can keep pace with with uh, time sensitive intelligence and really good satellite imagery then th that 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 really does level the playing field uh, and Russia's bombardments of the Ukrainian energy targets in recent weeks were larger and better planned than the attacks in the previous two years, knocking out generating facilities and limiting power supplies. That has made restoring equipment and protecting the key, the grid key priorities for the government, even as it struggles to assess how much damage has been done. Uh, Bloomberg again. So this is again most likely a result of that kind of intelligence coming from Russia. Of, ah, words coming from China that is allowing. Russia to to do much more effective damage to the Ukrainians uh, when they are, you know, throwing in their their missiles and shahids to Ukraine. It, this is a challenge that needs to be, I think, um, overcome. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you can stop China sharing intelligence with Russia. I, I, I mean, we can talk about economic pressure. But I don't know how much you could prove that they are or aren't. I, I, I don't know. The, the, these are the sort of things that happen very much behind closed doors. So I just hope that, that there can be uh, an effective pressure put on China to, to stop them from helping Russia in this way. I'm not overly hopeful, though. Let me know what you think. Anyway, I'm going to move on to the geopolitical video now. But this is a, a short military aid one. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Speak soon.